What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. I'm your host, Thomas London, and I am doing something I've never done before. So today, I am doing a review of the latest documentary, Daniel Brandon Energy, uh, which is from the documentaries made by the makers of Rad Global, which are the latest shoes that are out in the CrossFit space. So uh, first thing I wanted to do was show you the intro, but unfortunately, I don't want to get a copyright strike or possibly get my YouTube channel banned, so I will not be posting that. So uh, uh, link in the description of the documentary so you can take a look for yourself of what I'm talking about throughout this whole process. So um, first, I want to talk about Rad. So Rad is one of the newest shoe companies to come into the CrossFit space. They're roughly been around for five years and the creator of the, um, the CEO of the company is Benjamin Massey. So he's been in the CrossFit space for a while and designed this shoe, um, you know, to challenge Noble and everyone else. Uh, so I haven't worn a pair of those shoes before, but I've heard they're very good. Um, Vic from the touch and go gang, which um, his, the videos that we do are once a month, he wears rads and he swears by them. He loves them. So, um, the one thing I do like about rad is they, they leaned into the eighties style theme of, um, design work, videography, uh, even like, you know, all the colors and stuff. They're very vibrant. Uh, the designs are really cool and it's very retro. So, for me, being an '80s kid, I thought I thought it's pretty cool. Hence, I got this shirt right here, kind of like an '80s theme uh, T-shirt that I have. So, um, I do like that. And they, um, the shoe is also um, made in Portland, Oregon. Now, I thought it was at someplace else, but this is where they design all the shoes, make all the shoes um, for the company, and they're really big into into sustainability. Um, they want to use less fossil fuel as possible to produce the shoes that they have, uh, which I think is pretty cool. I know like Portland is very, um, you know, environmental friendly kind of state. And so I think that's awesome that they're trying to, you know, reduce the carbon footprint to make these shoes. Um, I would like to get a pair of those shoes, but I don't, I don't know. So we'll, we'll see what happens and see. Um, I do like some of the designs and colors that they do have in those shoes, so, um, I know they have a bunch of the, af a couple athletes, obviously the biggest ones in the rad space are Laura Horvat as well as Daniel Brandon. So obviously we're going to talk all about Daniel Brandon and not Laura Horvat, but those are the two big people in rad as of right now. So I watched, I watched the YouTube. Ch uh, so if you're watching the Daniel Brandon documentary, you're going to have to go on the rad global rad global YouTube page. Um, their page is absolutely blowing up. So I was looking at their metrics and they, from, from this past uh, month in February to now their, their growth has been over 1000%. And this video, the Daniel Brandon energy documentary documentary is easily getting i think it was like 3.1 thousand views per hour so this is definitely going to be one of their biggest um, videos that they have on their youtube channel they also have other videos too with uh laura horvat and it's more like a kind of like craig ritchie style uh theme to it so um and they also do like a bunch of other races and you know with their athletes and so it's it's pretty interesting so right now they their subscriber rate is about i think close to 7,000 close. It's, it's probably going to be like 8,000 by the time this video is done with all the, you know, all the views and all that stuff. So the director of this film, the Daniel Brandon energy is Ant Anthony green. And also, um, he was the director as well as the producer. And also who was a main part of this video was Cooper March. So that, that is Daniel Brandon's Daniel Brandon's agent. And this guy has done I don't know what else, what else he can do. So he's done a high rocks with Mal O'Brien. He's friends with Daniel Brandon. He's an agent. Um, he's a fellow Massachusetts guy, which I thought was pretty cool. And yeah, he's, he's done, he's doing a lot, a lot of things in it, which is, which is awesome for him. So, um, 
like I said, I wanted to start the intro right now about the video, but I don't want to get a copyright strike. So, but in the intro, it does talk like does have her training as well as, you know, going to the games and whatnot. And you hear in the background of people that they've interviewed um, in the background. So you hear the voices throughout the whole intro, which is pretty cool. Um, so the main the main part of this uh, documentary is like a typical documentary style video where you have one person looking at the interviewer and let's just say the interviewer is like over here. So the, and the camera's right here. Typically for documentaries, they don't look at the cameras. Um, so this is the exact style documentary that you will see in any other doc. So um, it pretty much starts with um, the one thing I do like about it is they've interviewed a whole bunch of people within this uh, within this video. Um, they have I mean, they range from her mom, Dave Castro, um, high school teachers um coaches and as well as justin kotler um and cooper marsh as well so um so i thought it was interesting they had even even her brother was in the uh in the documentary too which is pretty cool because i didn't know she had a sibling so um it's pretty cool to see all these people that were in uh this documentary and actually took part of it and actually were willing to kind of talk about their experience with danielle which is which is awesome so the one thing I do like about this documentary, I do like how they bounce back and forth from pretty much when they when she was in the CrossFit Games, all the way bouncing back to when she was a kid, uh, actually even when she was a baby, and kind of going back and forth, which was pretty cool to kind of see uh, from like 2019 to you know when she was in elementary school or, or whatever. So I thought that was a pretty cool way that they did it and as well as how they had the years like a timeline and reversed it back to you know when she was born and then you know and so on so um to be honest with you watching it was it was it was a great doc but it was like kind of it was kind of sad seeing like what she had to deal through when as a as a kid um you know she lit she didn't live the you know the lived in the best family environment um you know, when you watch a documentary, you'll see like multiple arrests from her mom, um, you know, moving in with her with her in-laws and like just a lot of bad stuff happening around her. And as well as like her in-laws didn't really help out with, you know, her experience as a child as well. Um, and which, which is sad. And I, you know, in the in the video, um, you kind of see the reason why she kind of led into playing sports because she didn't want to go home. So, um, which was very sad to say, see, and, you know, and it's, you know, it was, it was really sad. I, I didn't really, uh, expect that coming out of the movie. So, um, and also it's really cool to see how her teachers and friends and family, uh, not family, but her, their friends, family helped out and got her into CrossFit and, what led her to being a pole vaulter and, you know, going to Sac state as a division one athlete, um, sponsored athlete, not a sponsored athlete, but a division one scholarship athlete. So I, I thought that was a really cool part of the documentary to kind of see, you know, how people helped her out throughout the whole process of, you know, trying to make things better for her. Um, the one thing that really stuck out for me was, um, was just when she got cut from uh, underdogs athletics, they kind of go in detail about that. But um, obviously I, I wish they did a little bit more diving into that process. But, but to be honest with you, you know, that whole situation is mainly between her and Justin and everyone else and underdog. So uh, the higher ups and underdog, um, you know, it's, it's none of our business, but I mean, if they delved a little deeper into it, I think that may close the door for some people to understand the reason why that incident happens. Uh, because I've seen on Reddit that a lot of people are still confused of why she got cut from, from underdogs. Uh, so a couple months after the, she got cut, I think a month after she got cut, I interviewed Justin Kotler, um, on my podcast and 
I, I told him, I'm like, hey, I, I don't want to talk to you about the Daniel Brandon incident because it's it's none of my business. And he's like, okay, good. Because, you know, it's it's personable, you know, and, and looking at watching him in the documentary, it, it was like very sad to see him having to do that because I won't I don't want to spill it. But, um, yeah, it was his interview was probably the most interesting one out of the whole whole documentary. So here are my thoughts on the Daniel Brandon energy documentary. I think it is by far the best documentary that I've seen in the CrossFit space. Um, it is well done. The cast of people that they interviewed is, they did a great job. Even the interview, even the interview questions that they did were done really well. Um, this, this style of documentary in the CrossFit space needed to happen a long time ago. Uh, the behind the scenes that Savon did and everyone else, I think, you know, is amazing, but it's not what this documentary style is like. So I really think that, you know, hopefully CrossFit can get more into or other CrossFit companies can get into more of this style of videos and, you know, definitely make it more personable um, or get a better understanding on the athletes that they like. So hope you like the review and I will catch you later.